Hello, my name is Maddie. I'm Australian, but I live in Montevideo, Uruguay. Hola, mi nombre es Maddie. Soy australiana, pero vivo en Montevideo, Uruguay. back or welcome to anyone who is new today as you can tell by the title i'm going to be sitting down and sharing a few of my tips on how i learned a second language specifically how i learned spanish as an adult with no previous history of learning a language i would definitely not consider myself fluent right now i do live in uruguay in south america but um, we moved here just before covid happened so i haven't been able to get out too too much and like fully immersed in the culture like you normally would have been able to in the 12 months I've been living here but for more um, information on like moving here my daily life all that you can go check out my vlog channel if you are interested I'll have it linked down below me and my husband we share all kinds of videos about what it's like living here in Uruguay as a foreigner as well as just daily vlogs weekly kind of updates um, apartment prices cost of living all that kind of thing so go over to that channel if you are interested but today i wanted to just finally sit down and do a little bit of a video on how i've been personally learning the spanish language and some tips i have for anyone else out there who is trying to learn a language as an adult so in today's video, I'm going to break down a lot of different aspects around language learning, everything from where to begin if you know nothing already, to where to find resources such as websites, apps, people to follow on social media, um, written resources, all that kind of thing. So I'm going to break down each individual category as we go. I'll even include some timestamps down in the comment section, so there should be little timestamps in the um, play by down below if you want to skip ahead to any particular area super brief little history into my language learning journey essentially when I graduated high school I didn't speak any other languages than English which is pretty common living in Australia most people only speak English and I was 21 years old I was a full-time university student and I had never left Australia I wanted to travel, but none of my friends could travel with me at the time. I wasn't dating anyone and I just wanted to travel the world, but was looking into ways to travel safely as a solo female who didn't really have much travel experience. I then came across this video on YouTube about a girl who was traveling with a company called EF Travel or Education First. And they essentially just host language learning, like schools and like stays and all sorts of programs in countries all around the world. So I was like, sign me up why not clicked on the website selected a language out of tons of different languages it didn't have to be spanish but i was like you know what spanish looks fun i actually learned a little bit of italian in high school and my nana is from italy but for whatever reason i picked spanish and went with it i flew to costa rica alone and studied there for three weeks during an intensive language course then flew home and that's how it all started. Costa Rica was the best experience of my life. I even vlogged a little bit of it, but that was years ago and my vlogging skills have greatly improved since then. So I can link some of my videos on education first and that whole trip down below if you're curious, but keep in mind, they're a little bit old, a little bit poorly edited, but yeah, they're there if you want to see them. Um, when I was in Australia, I did take a language class about once a week for on and off, like maybe half the year for three years. So I did like three years, but maybe only a year and a half of lessons in Australia. And I didn't take it too seriously at the time because I was a full-time student at university to get my degree and language did not count towards my degree in nutrition and dietetics. So it was, you know, my language learning was only done in my free time and there was not that much mental capacity left for free time learning. But eventually I met a man, Alejandro, who's now my husband. And if you can't guess by the name, he comes from a Latino family. Well, his mother is from Uruguay, which is where we now live. So we started dating, we got engaged, we decided to leave Australia, travel the world, moved here, and here I am now one year later. And essentially that is the short version of the story. But despite all that language learning I had done previously, again, I wasn't taking it too seriously. I wasn't doing too much in my own time. I was really only doing like paid learning experiences and then when i moved here i kind of thought i'll just immerse in the culture and i'll pick it up like that but that didn't happen one there was the whole pandemic 
thing and we didn't go out of the house too much at first i was busy trying to work from home and make money and all this kind of thing so didn't have a lot of free time and i also didn't have a lot of interaction with locals just due to the fact that everyone's wearing masks and um not really leaving their houses that much but eventually i actually found someone on youtube who was sharing a lot of tips on learning a language like on your own so i will link her channel down below her name is anna lenks i believe she's only like 20 or maybe, maybe even only 19 years old but she knows like four languages so highly recommend her channel if you're interested in more tips but from watching her videos i kind of put together a little regime on learning on my own in my home i made a whole big list and that's what i'm going to be sharing with you for the rest of the video okay so where do you start for example you speak absolutely none of the language you want to learn where i started with was with a language learning app other than my you know immersion in costa rica I use the app, I think it was called Babbel, or the one I'm using currently is Duolingo, which I feel like everyone knows about. And I definitely don't think an app like this is going to get you from zero to fluent, but it is going to teach you a lot of the basics and be a great place to start. Now, both of these apps do have a free and a paid version. I currently only use the free version, although I have paid for both of them separately in the past. So I highly recommend getting started with places like that. They'll teach you common phrases, such as how to say hello, goodbye, um, like ordering food at a restaurant, all those sorts of things. They have like themed lessons and I find them very helpful. One thing I will just touch on is that most of these language resources are going to be specific to a region. And when it comes to Spanish, there's so many different variations depending on the country. For example, most like Spanish learning resources are gonna give you Spain Spanish, which is a fine way to go. But for me living here in Uruguay now, Uruguayan Spanish isn't quite different than Spain Spanish or even it's different than Mexican Spanish. So you kind of got to just keep that in mind that some words, some phrases and the accents and pronunciation is going to be different depending on where you are in the world. And my final beginner tip is to get on YouTube and search for learn Spanish for beginners. Even if they're videos for kids, I know you can get like Peppa Pig videos in like Mandarin Chinese. So I'm sure you can get like Spanish versions or things like that. I highly recommend doing that and following people who are teaching Spanish rather than just watching Spanish creators, which I'll get to later on. Specifically following people who know how to teach is going to be a much better place to start. And again, it's free. When it comes to language learning, there's gonna be four main areas that you're gonna to wanna to focus on practicing, that is speaking out loud, listening and just comprehending, reading and writing, and then of course, grammar and vocabulary. So as I go through, I'm gonna put up little pop-ups on the screen to kind of show which areas are gonna be targeted by which tip. Some of them are gonna target a few, maybe all of them at once, maybe only one, but we'll see as we go along, but that way we won't have to keep mentioning it. So just keep an eye out for these and that will kind of indicate which of those skills is going to be practiced by which of the practical tips. Okay, so once you've got the basics down, then you can move into other areas such as watching shows on Netflix. This is another good one because if you already, I mean, it's not free if you don't already have Netflix, but if you have the Netflix program or any other kind of streaming platform, most of them will enable you to add, like to watch with subtitles. So whether it's watching a movie that you already know word for word, like for me, if I were to watch Mean Girls or like a Disney movie, I have Disney Plus and you can watch those in Spanish. Movie that you know off by heart almost, then watching that either dubbed in Spanish or with Spanish subtitles is gonna be a really good way to start learning um, more like basic words. Kids movies are also great for that just because the language tends to be a lot simpler, which when you're learning a new language is ideal because the complicated words and like sentence structures just kind of get a bit um, a bit confusing when you're learning. So if you can, maybe stick with yeah, like media aimed at children. You can of course find things like this on YouTube as well, but I love watching it on Netflix. And if you're watching it on a laptop rather than on your TV, maybe you can even do it on a phone. You can actually like play it at like 0.75% speed like currently i've been watching a program called jane the virgin which is originally in english but it's like a little bit latino flair so some of the characters will speak in spanish but i've been watching it fully in spanish and then also with spanish subtitles at the same time so i can't like cheat and just look at the english but that's because i'm kind of a little bit more 
advanced at this point, I guess. So that's what I've been doing. But in order to make sure that I am actually like learning the vocabulary a little bit better and being able to follow along with the conversations and not just like glossing over it too much, I will watch it at 0.75 speed. And then I actually have time to like write down any words that I don't already know in a notebook. Again, it's probably showing me like Mexican Spanish or Spain Spanish, not Uruguayan Spanish. And some of the phrases are going to differ, but it's a good place to start and get some additional vocabulary. Listen to how people would naturally speak. And even better is if you can find shows that are intended to be watched in Spanish, like a new one on Netflix is Sky Rojo. It's a Spanish um, like drama set in Spain. Um, very good. You can of course watch it dubbed in English or with English subtitles if you want to, but I watched it in Spanish and it was amazing. <laughs> Highly recommend. Okay, moving back to YouTube quickly. These are a few creators that I personally follow because they talk about things that I am interested in and they just happen to talk about them in Spanish. So one of them is Ashley Ro Roke? Roku. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. But she kind of does more like makeup and fashion stuff. I don't even know how old she is. I feel like she's a teenager, but I like her videos purely because she speaks in Spanish. She's gorgeous and she's obviously quite a popular creator because she just kept coming up in my suggesteds. And eventually I was like, you know what, sure, why not? I'll trust the algorithm, I'll watch it. And here we are. Another one is Isadora Vera. She kind of does more lifestyle and study type videos. Um, she actually just made one about how she learned English in four months, so check that out if you are interested. Um, another one is Viol Franco. She's, again, I think she's quite young where she does vlogs about her life in Spain. I believe she might even be from, like, near here, maybe even from Argentina. But then she moved to Spain with her family and goes to school there now, so she does, like, vlogs and things, and I find them quite interesting. And also videos on, like, the differences between, like, Spain Spanish and Argentinian Spanish. And again, you can watch... A lot of these things with subtitles if you if the creator has enabled them so that's a great feature or even iris Roig. again don't know how to pronounce that one but she does more organization and productivity videos here on youtube so those are just some people that i follow and the more creators you subscribe to or videos you watch that are in spanish the more the algorithm is going to suggest you other creators and more content in spanish to watch next time let's talk about utilizing social media for language learning Again, if you're watching videos in Spanish, try to comment under those videos in Spanish to ask your questions. Or even if you don't have a question to ask, just reading the comments of other people because chances are they're going to be asking questions in Spanish. You can copy and paste them into a translator if you want to see what the, you know, what the words mean. But it's a good way to see, again, how native speakers will talk, keeping in mind typos and slang and all that kind of thing. But it's it's interesting to see the difference between like a translated English to Spanish sentence versus what someone would actually say if Spanish is just their first language and just reading comments is a really easy and free way to get an insight into that. This one I feel like is kind of cliche but still is helpful and effective, writing your Instagram captions in Spanish. Again, you might be using a translator to translate your English caption into Spanish but even that is still helpful because it's something that you would have said anyway, but you're then just translating it and seeing how you would say that in Spanish. Good place to start. Again, you can follow people on Instagram who speak Spanish and share Spanish quotes and words or watch their stories and just listen to them, to them speaking. That one is definitely more of an advanced tip because a native speaker is likely to be speaking at a much faster pace than what you're able to keep up with when you're learning, but, but it's all good practice and eventually it'll get easier. Okay, another thing that I've personally been doing a lot and another app I've been using is TikTok. Again, the more people you follow on TikTok who speak Spanish, the more it's going to recommend you people who speak Spanish. But living here in Uruguay, I get suggested Spanish people because of the location settings. Although, regardless of where you are in the world, if you go into your TikTok app settings, you can actually select, um, like select which language videos you want to be shown, whether that's Russian, German, French, Spanish, English, you can add them to your settings so that the algorithm or so that your app settings know to suggest you videos in those languages. So I have that enabled and also I actually make videos on TikTok where I speak Spanish. So that is one that, I mean, maybe not everyone is into, but 
for, for me, for whatever reason, I feel more comfortable talking to my phone in Spanish and then uploading that to the internet than speaking to a person in like who's standing in front of me. I guess just the fact that it's a recording and not like no one's gonna be replying to me just made me feel a little bit more comfortable. And that was a really good way for me to practice um, phrases and then people could correct me in the comments if they wanted to, or even just if I made a video in Spanish, then people who live near me also speak Spanish would then comment on that video and ask me questions in Spanish. And then it's more, it's just more practice and then you can read the comments and reply and yada, yada, yada. So then it just, you know, you get down into this rabbit hole of just using the language more and it can be really helpful. So even if I was living in Australia, I could be making videos in Spanish. Of course, not that many people around me in my location would be able to understand what I was saying, but you know, you might be surprised by how many people live near you are also trying to practice a language and then they can you can kind of interact together but speaking of that there are actually some other apps that i want to share with you and one of them is called hello talk i believe i'll put up a few little screen recordings on the side i was just having a play with these last night i don't personally use these apps that much but i'm gonna probably start because they look really helpful essentially hello talk is an app that you can chat with um, like native speakers. So you go in there and you put in what your language that you know is and then what language you're learning is. And then it will suggest you people to follow who are native in that language or have you know language profici proficiency and then you can chat with them. It's like messaging just random strangers basically but they don't get any of your information, only your name and your languages. And then you can just ask them questions, they can correct you. I screen recorded the little example. You like chat with a robot and it's very helpful and you can yeah, like correct each other and it's just, it genuinely seems very helpful and I will probably be using that a lot more often. So I highly recommend that. You can even send voice messages if you want to practice like pronouncing words. So highly recommend Hello Talk. A few other ones I have listed are Quizlet, Fluent U, Memorize and Reverso Context. These are all kind of like little quiz apps. I will just say that Fluent U, it wants you to give your payment information straight away, which I'm not about. So I didn't sign up to that one and I haven't practiced using it, but I did get recommended that by someone else. So if you wanna be paying for an app, you can give it a try. You do get like a 14 day free trial, but you had to like put in your, your details and like your payment cards before you get the free trial. And I just always forget to cancel them and I didn't wanna be charged for an app that I'm not gonna use. So. Check that out at your own risk if you are interested, but Quizlet, Memorize, and Reverso Context are free apps. You can again, get the paid version or you can just use the free version and they're similar, but all different. I'll again, put up a few screen recordings over here. So check those out for some more practice. Again, I already mentioned um, Duolingo and Babbel. So these are just some extra options to practice specific different skills. Okay, so moving on to a little bit more advanced stuff now. Some websites you can go to that have, again, free information. I actually meant to talk about this earlier, but I forgot. Spanishdict.com, so D-I-C-T.com. Highly, highly, highly recommend. You can use it just as a translator app. Hoy fui a las tiendas, compré algo de comida y volví a casa. Or you can actually go on and do like little mini lessons. They have like flashcards. You can like learn how to talk about um, foods or like select the specific category of holiday or Christmas and learn about Navidad. Obviously this is specifically a Spanish learning app. So maybe it makes more sense to talk about it now anyway. They might have different versions for different languages, but I use Spanish Dict a lot not only just for translations, it will give you good examples of why you use things. You can also check conjugations and everything. Highly, highly, highly recommend getting on Spanish Dict if you are learning, if you're learning Spanish, you will definitely not regret it. You can do little quizzes and like save words that you're learning. And yeah, it's great. I will also include a few little um, like screen captures of some websites I was using that I was shown by my Spanish teacher in Uruguay. So check out, these websites if you want more again most of these were specifically like spain spanish which isn't always helpful for right here which is why it was really helpful having an in-person teacher who would be able to teach me like the local way to say things not everyone wants to pay for a, a language teacher essentially so these websites are great if you want to try and teach yourself okay getting towards the end now 
written resources. I obviously have a few textbooks from when I was studying like at all the different places I've studied in the past. I have one that is specifically from the Education First people. I have two by a different brand that I was using for my Australian, the classes I was taking in Australia, but I left all of these in Australia, which was really stupid. I thought I was gonna be flying home to collect more things and they were just really heavy in my suitcase and I couldn't fit too much in the one go. So my textbooks are all back in Australia. So I had to start fresh when we moved here. And with COVID, we, our flights got canceled and we could never um, go back and get the rest of our stuff. So that was a challenge, but depending on which classes you take, if you do a like an in-person class or even an online class, they will probably suggest to you a different textbook. If anyone actually has good recommendations for a, an, immediate, an intermediate slash advanced learner, let me know, because there's still a lot more that I want to practice and I'm struggling to find um, resources, especially living here in Uruguay. There's not many books locally that are like learn Spanish books. It's English learning books or, you know, because the local language is Spanish. So let me know if you have any suggestions on textbooks I can find on Amazon or Book Depository or something like that. But something I have been doing lately instead of textbooks is buying magazines. Again, living in a South American country, obviously I can just go to like the service station and find these. But even if you don't, you could order like Vogue Espanol or go to a larger bookstore or larger um, like news agency and you can probably find at least one foreign magazine in the language you're learning, hopefully, depending on like if you're living in a large city or not. You can also subscribe online or check yeah, like online resources, whether it's like e-news, like the, the e-news equivalent, like gossip columns from Spain or from um, Argentina or whatever. I think most of these magazines are more Argentinian than Uruguayan just because Uruguay is such a small country, but I have InStyle, I have this one, I have a Vogue one. I have this big chunky Vogue one. And I have this bridal magazine when we were planning to plan our wedding here. We're now thinking we'll do the ceremony in Australia, not here anyway, when, you know, travel is back on again. But magazines are a great, great way to have more like reading material. You can of course go through and like highlight, add post-it notes, highlight all the words you don't know, then look them up, find the translation and, you know, go from there. It also gives you, again, natural spoken sentences because this is what like Spanish speakers are gonna be reading. So yeah, highly recommend getting some magazines. It's also a little bit more light reading than just picking up a book, but I do have a few books that I've been trying to read. Again, if you're a big reader and you have read one specific book a hundred times, whether that's Harry Potter or whatever kind of book you love and is your favorite book, try ordering it online in Spanish or in whatever language you're learning. And then because you already know the plot line, you can just kind of see all the new words. Again, highlight as you go. If that doesn't just freak about highlighting in a book, even just adding post-it notes, looking up all the translations for the things you don't know. It's gonna be a great way to start. I actually have two children's books that I bought the first week we moved here to Uruguay, because again, my Spanish was so basic back then that I needed like beginner friendly stuff. So I got picture books instead of like a novel, but now I've progressed from a picture book to magazines and we're getting there. <laughs> and finally, my bonus little random section. I'm gonna start out with the ones that are more audio related. So Duolingo actually have a podcast which is available on Spotify and I believe Apple Podcasts or wherever else you get your podcasts from or on their website. And it is actually very interesting. They are short stories in kind of half English, half Spanish for I think they call it intermediate, beginner intermediate. Spanish, highly recommend. They are, I mean, they might not be like the most interesting stories, not most of them, like the first few seasons, but definitely good for learning. They're fairly short, maybe 20 minutes each. Highly recommend if you're on the bus or you just have 20 minutes to kill, pop your headphones in and have a little listen. You can also find the transcripts for them on the website, which means you can go and check all the vocabulary and make a list, print it out, highlight things, all that kind of thing. But the new season, the new season of the podcast was very interesting, especially living here in Uruguay, because it was about a like it was a um, it was a special series where they did like episodes all along the same story instead of doing a different story each episode. It was like a big long series about a bank robbery in Argentina ten years ago. So that was 
fascinating. It's also really close by to where I am now. And one of the bank robbers was a Uruguayan man. So it was very interesting. And it was also great to hear the Uruguayan accent, which is a lot, not the, well, not the Uruguayan accent. It was the Argentinian accent, which is very similar to the way Uruguayans speak rather than hearing um, like Mexican Spanish or Colombian Spanish or Spain Spanish. Cause again, it's all completely different. So highly recommend that podcast if you want practice listening. And again, with the transcripts, it makes it very easy to follow along if you get lost. Another thing is just listening to music. But as my teachers have always warned me, be careful with music because when it comes to pronunciation, sometimes people will, just like they do in English, they will change the pronunciation of a word just to make it rhyme or fit like the beat of the song. So you can't take it all for like 100% accuracy because they might just be, you know, singing and not necessarily speaking accurately, if that makes sense. There's also a lot of slang, but it can be fun. And if you already are like listening to the Spanish songs to then just like look up the lyrics and see what it is that they're actually saying, translate it. I like to write it out in my notebook because I find that when I write things down, it sinks in a little bit better, but yeah, then the next time you listen to the song, you can kind of be like translating it in your head and slowly it'll start sinking in. Something else we did when we first moved here is post-it notes. I even have one just up in the corner currently. Can you see that up there? It says esquina because the word for corner is esquina. So we have these post-it notes just placed around our house. We have one on the oven, on the fridge, um, heladera, heladera. You can put them on all sorts of things, puerta. My plan was actually to go back and write sentences for all of them, but I never got around to that. I completely forgot about it until just now. So yeah, definitely recommend getting post-it notes, writing down the, the, the word in the language you're learning, sticking on the item, and then every time you go to use it, you're gonna see it. Now this tip is another one you've probably heard before, and that is simply changing your phone settings to the language you are learning, but be aware that when your phone actually sends you like, cautions or like warning um overheated or warning whatever password has been changed and like you will sometimes get like more complicated notifications from your phone and trying to understand those in spanish was a challenge but most of the things like when it comes to finding the torch and the volume and um little things like that it will slowly start sinking in what the spanish word or the whatever language it is word is so yeah, definitely probably don't do this if you're first learning the language because you will be very confused when you get notification warnings. But other than that, if you know a decent amount of the language already, this is another great way to just have it sink in because you're seeing these all the time. You look at your phone however many times a day and each time you look at it, you're seeing more words in Spanish and practicing. And finally, journaling in Spanish. I don't actually personally journal in Spanish necessarily, but I kind of do that via TikTok, if that makes any sense. So I have this little notebook here. It was supposed to be my little vocabulary book and I do have some vocabulary at the front, um, like random right little vocabulary here. But then towards the end, when I would go to film a TikTok, I would write out what I wanted to say, check all the translations with an app and then write it down, pop this in front of me and then read them out. So these are just like, spoken out loud journals like sometimes i would film a little like mini daily day in the life vlog but then i would write down what i wanted to voice over it translate it to spanish and then speak it out loud to my phone so not only was that like a little journaling activity writing in spanish but i'm also then practicing speaking it out loud but if you don't want to post it to tiktok you could just journal and keep it for yourself to look back on i actually got the tip from again from anna lynx and she said to journal in the language you're learning but if you don't remember, like if you get lost on a word and you can't remember how to say um, like vase, for example, you can just say like there were flowers in the vase, so flores in, in la, and then like say vase, but highlight it so that you can come back to it at the end, finish your sentence, then come back and once you're done like writing your little page for the day, it would just be half a page, a few sentences even, a full page, however much you feel like, and then coming back at the end, looking up all the words you didn't know and replacing the English with the language you're learning so the spanish version um so yeah that's another great one is to just journal because it's kind of it's a good way to try to convert the way you already think and speak in your native language into the new language 
And that is it. Those are all my tips that I can think of this time around for learning a language. If you have any tips that you would like to share with me or with anyone else watching this video, please feel free to comment down below. I would love to hear your suggestions. If you speak Spanish, then comment down below in Espanol and we can chat in Spanish. <laughs> also, if you would like me to start posting videos to this YouTube channel speaking in Spanish, then let me know down below because I feel like I'm almost at the point where I would feel comfortable doing that. I have made one video in Spanish in the past, but that took me about an hour and a half to film like a 10 minute video. So yeah, I've improved a little bit since then. I'm getting a lot better. If you want to see me speaking in Spanish more regularly, definitely check out my TikTok account. I'll have it linked down below. I post videos at least a few times a week speaking in Spanish. I also do live chats where I speak kind of half and half. If someone asks me a question in English, I'll reply in English. But if they ask me a question in Spanish, I will try to always reply in Spanish because one, it's great practice for me. And two, I feel like, again, living here, I'm just trying to be as accommodating as possible to the people around me. But I know not everyone has locals speaking the language they're trying to learn to practice off of, which is where all of these other tips have come into play. I feel like most of my learning has come through doing things like this because it's only through practicing like on my own that I built up the confidence to start speaking to people in real time, even though I have this amazing resource, which is speaking to locals. I'm quite shy and the thought of saying something wrong has stopped me for the longest time from actually getting out there and practicing, but I've been doing a lot better and pretty soon, hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year, I'm like almost fluent in the language if I just keep working every day practicing a little bit as I go, I will eventually get there. So let me know down below what language is your first language, your native language, what languages do you know, what you're trying to learn. If you have any tips or if you have any textbook suggestions, please, please, please let me know. I would highly appreciate it. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Besos. Gracias por, um, por ver, por ver, for watching. Ciao. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another video. We are sitting down to finally film our one year little update. What is it? Anniversary? No, expedition? Anniversary? Oh yeah, I guess one year, one year anniversary since arriving mm. here in Uruguay. Technically that was like two weeks ago now. We arrived here on the 5th of March 2020, but we tried to 